Ready. Sven Kramer is a Dutch speed skater that is considered by many to be the best the sport has ever produced. And it is easy to imagine what anyone would say that when you consider that he is a four-time Olympic gold medalist, a 29-time world champion and a 10-time European champion, all won in various disciplines. He's characterized as being a ruthless competitor that does not only want to win, he wants to dominate. I remember him being upset if he didn't win by a big enough margin. To give you a bit of a better idea who Sven Kamer is, when the Dutch television tried to make a piece on what speed skaters do when they're not skating, they couldn't find anything for Sven. He is absolutely obsessed with skating, and it is the only thing he does. So when Kamer showed up, at the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. Nobody expected anything else than a gold medal. He had been unbeaten for over four years on the 10 kilometer distance, and for the first 16 laps of the race, it didn't seem that anyone was going to beat him today either. He had a more than comfortable lead of over two and a half seconds, and with only nine laps to go, it didn't seem that anything was going to stop him. Until this happened. Now, for the people who are not as familiar with speed skating, the sport is fairly simple. Whoever can do the distance in the fastest time wins. Two races compete at the same time and they both skate in their individual lanes. In order to make sure that each skater covers the same distance, they both have to switch lanes every lap. So, if you exit a turn in the outer lane, you have to switch to the inner lane. It's really simple. But in that race, Sven Kramer got confused. He was supposed to go to the outer lane, but at the last moment changed his mind and went into the inner lane. What followed was that Kramer, despite having the fastest time in the event, got disqualified and robbed of a certain gold medal. It turned out that it wasn't Kramer himself who made the mistake, but rather his coach, Gerard Kempkers. At the last moment, he instructed his athlete to go into the wrong lane. I had never seen an athlete or a coach make this mistake before, and I haven't seen anyone do it since. You can really compare this to a hockey player deliberately shooting the puck into his own net or a racing driver going the wrong way around the track. So why did a highly successful coach and athlete make such a rookie mistake? To better understand this unique situation, we have to look at the concept of choking. A situation in which the performance of a highly skilled athlete, often when they're just about to win, rapidly deteriorates to the point where it's unrecognizable. What happens when an athlete, or in this case a coach, chokes is that due to the immense pressure that is being put on the individual, certain processes that are normally automatic are now suddenly becoming conscious again. In this case, we are talking about a highly skilled and experienced coach that has led many athletes to world and Olympic titles. He's been on the side of the speed skating oval many times and therefore the act of what lane to point to is automatic. But on that day, due to the pressure of an imminent gold medal, this process suddenly became conscious again and that's what allowed him to make the mistake. The true cause of this mistake didn't become clear until eight years later when Despite being the favorite at both the Sochi and Pyeongchang Olympic Games, the 10K race is the only race that Sven Kramer has never won, and probably never will. With the example of Sven Kramer in mind, what can you do to prevent choking in your environment? Although the causes and therefore the specific treatment for choking are individual to each athlete, there's one general tool that everyone can try and use to prevent choking. 
Remember that I said that choking is caused when automatic processes suddenly become conscious again? One specific tool that you can use to prevent this from happening is to make sure that you focus your mind on task irrelevant thoughts. So instead of saying high toss when you are going to do your tennis serve, you can say smooth. Now you're not saying anything technical about a skill that you have already automated and therefore you will not consciously think about executing the skill. You can even take it a step further and just say completely irrelevant things such as the day of the week. As long as you prevent your brain from making automatic processes conscious again, you have a good chance of preventing choking. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions about choking and how you can prevent it from happening in your situation, just leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to give you some advice.